Guys, in the comp wagon, right here, Rock Powered RC Chassis. Um, I've got the Python X by FureTech. That's in here. I've got a few things I really want to show you guys on the table. So let's get to that table. Let's do it. The first thing I want to show you guys is the profile of this ESC. So it's a nice low profile. It's got a nice metal case, good for heat dissipation, all that wonderful stuff. Um, it's uncensored. You got your wires right here, all that stuff. And I'm actually running a 14 pole Holmes Hobbies V3 snub nose 2040 KV. I want to show you guys one of the most incredible features I've ever seen on this style ESC. And here is my setup. So you can see the warning right here because I've got the BC set at 8.4 volts. The locked brake feature right there. That's what I want to show you guys. Right now it's at 100. I'm going to drop that all the way down to zero. And I want you guys to see this right here. See that? I'm going to turn it up right here. Watch this. I'm going to explain how this works. God. All right, so let me explain how this works. These ESCs, they have some FOC on them. And I say some FOC because they're not fully FOC. But it actually physically holds the rotor, in this case the outside of the outrunner, in the position. I mean, granted, it can only hold as much as the motor is, but that's where your gearing and all that comes into play, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get this up close with the microphone so you can hear the ESC working to hold the motor in place. In this mode, when you're sitting at the neutral point where the drag brake is actually holding, it's physically holding the rotor or the outside in place. Okay, so um, now the great thing about this is that you won't have any, you know, how you get your penalized for your rollbacks and all that, you know, tires roll back. Well, you're not going to get that here. It holds like the fusions do. That's how awesome this thing is. So... With that in there, you can actually run this. Plus, it's 4S capable, all the wonderful stuff. This thing right here is awesome. Now, you may end up with a little bit more heat. If you're sitting on a hill and it's consistently holding, it's actually putting current to the motor. So you could actually end up in heat, a heat situation with that. But overall, as long as your gearing is right for what you're doing, you should never have an issue at all. Now... Well, now that I've showed you all that, let's get this thing outside so I can show you it in actual action. To further show you guys what I showed you on the table with the motor and the brake hold, this is with everything turned off. Look at this. See how it's rolling back? Now I'm going to turn it up. All right, now let's look at this. There you go. Look at that. How awesome is that? No more accidental reverse penalties with this one. And so now that we've seen the demonstration on the brake hold feature, which I really like that feature, let's go into our drive. Now, one thing about this, all the issues with the transition from startup to drive seem to be taken care of. I mean, Really, really nice. And this setup, having the capper front 10-3 rear, I like this setup too, especially for our comps. We don't run very tight gates. However, having that skinny back end with the wide front, you can zip right through these things. Woohoo! Come on up. Yeah, hopper's not a problem. Piece of cake. One day I'm going to change these tires out. Oh, nice hook. If you guys notice, look at all the pine straw falling. It is that time of the year, which means I'm going to get to replenish my washed out, driest, cleanest mud pit in the world soon. <laughs> I'll be able to replenish that. Let's go and get on hard line. 
see what we got down here. Different track widths do sometimes pose an issue. Like that. There we go. Wow. Man, hard line is really hard today, isn't it? Dude, that should not have been that tough. <laughs> but it was what it was. Man, hard line was really tough today. Wow. Maybe I need to put some better tires on this sooner rather than later. But the thing is, I got to have the right offsets to make all this work. See how those wheels get that offset and everything, the front versus the back. So, and these pro builds, a whole bunch of screws to deal with. We're gonna jump on an old one here called Ridge Line. I haven't done Ridge Line in a long time. It's still a good climb. Except a lot of the stuff now, the vehicles have built beyond what those were really difficult for, if that makes any sense. So let's go ahead and jump on the side hill up here. Let's see if what we can do here. Yeah, C drive's great. Oh, I got that rust up there. That did not work out at all. There we go. One more time. If I fall off of it again, then I know it is not meant for to follow this line right here. You got to be careful. Not the C hub will just tear you all kinds of up. Oh, I see you doing better this time around. All right, now I got to make the transition over to here. Kind of get that back end to come back with a little bit. I get a thing to make the touch. If I get that front to touch right here. Oh, look at that. Looking good. Oh. That was actually a really good transition on that. Really good. Hopefully I was able to put some tech into this one for you and really show you what I was hoping to show you. And the biggest thing is that brake lock feature, lock brake feature, all that stuff like that. That is really huge because honestly, the fusions kind of do that as well. So, and I believe that is a FOC thing. I don't believe there's any other way to do that. I don't think they've got a way to do it with normal censored motors yet. It's just, and typically speaking, all a brake is, is touching the wires together, whether it's three wires or two. That's typically all a brake is. Now, some of the more advanced ESCs, they can even on a brush, they can notice a difference on the windings, the uh, impedance and all that stuff. And like the ISDT will kind of work a little bit to try to hold that armature because you brush now, but this right here seems to do it the best, this and the Fusion. But if you're building a very specific vehicle for competition, you have the motor that you want to run. A little pancake style thin motor, big fat motor, it doesn't matter. You know what you want to run and you're gonna build around that motor. Positioning all your electronics and everything like that. So that's where this really plays a role. So guys, hopefully I was able to show you guys a lot um, did some driving, had some had some fun with it. So check that description. Use those links. I'll link this up down below. Um, guys, I want you to have a wonderful day. Um, this thing right here, I really, really do like the Python X. Really do. Guys, have a great one. Guys, you made it to the end. This is awesome. Thank you so much. You guys making it to the end of the video means so much to me. Uh, I mean, for real. Consider joining, becoming a member for just $2 a month. That's the cheapest way to go. In the description are affiliate links, A main, eBay, Amazon. You guys know all the all the stuff on that. Um, but yeah, guys, it means a lot that you're here and you're listening to this right now. And I want you to have a great day.